The story of angels coming down from heaven to the earth to mingle with humans and have sexual relationships with their women is a well-known story. However, there is a twist to that story and I intend to unravel it in this video. You see, throughout history, there have been stories about the children of Seth, who rebelled against God and mixed with the daughters of Cain. These stories can be traced back to the second century C and can be found in various Christian and Jewish sources. Some of the notable figures who mention these tales include Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai, Augustine of Hippo, Sextus Julius Africanus, and the letters attributed to Saint Clement. Even in the modern Amharic Ethiopian Orthodox Bible, these stories persist. In Henoch 2 verse 1 to 3, it is written that the offspring of Seth, who lived on the holy mount, saw the daughters of Cain and fell in love with them. They decided among themselves to choose wives from Cain's descendants and have children with them. The stories of the offspring of Seth mingling with Cain's daughters have been passed down through generations, making them an important part of both religious and cultural traditions. It is crucial to recognize that these stories serve various purposes, such as explaining the origins of different lineages, offering moral lessons, and emphasizing the consequences of disobedience to God's will. Moreover, these tales reflect the beliefs and values of the societies in which they emerged. As with many ancient stories, variations might exist in different texts and interpretations. However, the core theme of the offspring of Seth associating with Cain's descendants remains consistent across these sources. The accounts of Seth's descendants rebelling against God and engaging with Cain's daughters have a long history in both Christian and Jewish texts. These stories have been cherished throughout the years, passing from one generation to another, and continue to hold significance in religious and cultural contexts. Orthodox Judaism has a clear belief about the meaning of Genesis 6. They reject the idea that it refers to angels marrying humans. Shimon bar Yochai, an important figure in Jewish tradition, even placed a curse on anyone teaching this idea. Rashi and Nachmanides, who are respected scholars, also supported this stance. There is a text called Pseudophilos Biblical Antiquities 3 verse 1 to 3, which might imply that the sons of God mentioned in Genesis were actually humans, not angels. Because of this, most Jewish commentaries and translations describe the Nephilim, the beings mentioned in Genesis 6, as the offspring of sons of nobles rather than sons of God or sons of angels. This understanding is also supported by other ancient texts like the Targum Onkelos, Symmachus, and the Samaritan Targum, which all suggest that the Nephilim were from the offspring of sons of rulers or sons of judges. So, according to Orthodox Judaism and various commentaries, the Nephilim were not the result of angels marrying humans, but rather they were the descendants of important figures or nobles. It is essential to remember that interpretations of ancient texts can vary and different scholars may have different perspectives on the same passages. However, within the context of Orthodox Judaism and many Jewish commentaries and translations, this is how they understand the story of Genesis 6 and the Nephilim. For a long time, some Christians have believed that the sons of God mentioned in ancient texts were actually the descendants of Seth who used to be righteous but later rebelled. They think that the daughters of men referred to the descendants of Cain, who were considered unrighteous. According to this belief, the Nephilim were the result of the union between these two groups. This viewpoint dates back to at least the first century C and can be found in Jewish writings. It also appears in Christian sources from the third century or possibly even earlier. Some well-known Christian figures who shared this belief include Sextus Julius Africanus, Ephraim the Syrian, and others. The idea can be traced throughout the Clementine literature. Supporters of this view point to a statement by Jesus in Matthew 24 verse 38, where he mentioned that in those days before the flood they the humans were, marrying and giving in marriage. They interpret this as evidence for the mingling of the righteous descendants of Seth and the unrighteous descendants of Cain. This interpretation has been a significant perspective held by certain Christian communities for many centuries. It has shaped their understanding of the stories in ancient texts and the origins of the Nephilim. However, 
It's important to acknowledge that interpretations of ancient texts can vary among different Christian groups, and not all Christians hold this particular view. Some scholars and theologians may offer alternative explanations or interpretations based on their understanding of the texts and historical context. As with any ancient texts, there may be room for differing interpretations, and individuals and communities may continue to explore and discuss the meaning of these passages within their respective religious traditions. The diversity of interpretations reflects the richness and complexity of religious thought and the ongoing search for understanding our ancient heritage. Some individuals and groups, such as St. Augustine, John Chrysostom, and John Calvin, interpret Genesis 6 verse 2 differently. According to their view, the angels who fathered the Nephilim were not actual celestial beings, but certain human males from the lineage of Seth. These men were called sons of God because of their previous covenant with Yahweh similar to references in Deuteronomy 14 verse 1 and 32 verse 5. In this interpretation, these human males from the lineage of Seth started to become more focused on earthly desires and pleasures. As a result, they chose to marry women from the general population, referred to as the daughters of men. These women were often believed to be descended from Cain or from people who did not worship God. According to this perspective, the Nephilim were the offspring of these unions between the men from Seth's lineage and the women from other groups. This interpretation seeks to explain the origins of the Nephilim based on human actions and choices, rather than involving celestial beings. It is important to note that various individuals and religious traditions may have different interpretations of ancient texts, and these interpretations can shape their understanding of religious teachings and beliefs. The diversity of views reflects the richness and complexity of religious thought and the ongoing search for meaning within religious scriptures. The Sons of Seth view regarding Genesis 6 verse 2 is also held by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. This belief is supported by their own Gizi manuscripts and Amharic translation of the Haile Selassie Bible. It's important to note that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church considers certain books like One Enoch and Jubilees to be canonical which differ from the Western academic editions. This perspective is not only found within the religious context, but also in a few extra-biblical ancient works. For example, it appears in the Clementine literature, the 3rd century Cave of Treasures, and the 6th century Gizi work called The Conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. According to these sources, the offspring of Seth were said to have disobeyed God by intermingling and having relations with the Cainites who were the descendants of Cain. As a consequence of this behavior, wicked children were born from these unions, and they were described as being very different from one another. Their actions angered God, leading to his decision to bring about the deluge, or the great flood, as described in the conflict of Adam and Eve with Satan. The Sons of Seth view offers an explanation for the events leading up to the flood and the origins of the Nephilim, attributing the cause to the disobedience and intermingling of the descendants of Seth with other groups. Again, it is essential to recognize that interpretations of ancient texts can vary across different religious traditions and historical contexts. The diversity of perspectives adds to the richness of religious thought and the ongoing exploration of sacred scriptures. Those individuals who mingled with the daughters of Cain were the children of Seth, descendants of Adam, who lived on a high mountain and maintained their purity innocence, and glory, much like angels. They were even called angels of God because of their virtuous nature. However, when they disobeyed and mixed with the children of Cain, they had children together. The Brown Driver Briggs Lexicon, 1908, defines Nephilim as giants and suggests that proposed etymologies for the word are uncertain and speculative. Many interpretations are based on the assumption that the word is related to the Hebrew verbal root and pl meaning fall. One proposed interpretation comes from Robert Baker Girdlestone in 1871, suggesting that Nephilim comes from the Hiphael causative stem, implying that they could be perceived as those that cause others to fall down. Another perspective, as noted by Ronald Hendel, considers Nephilim as a passive form, meaning ones who have fallen, similar in grammatical structure to words like packet, meaning one who is appointed a deputy or overseer, and a sir, 
meaning one who is bound a prisoner. Despite these proposed interpretations, the true meaning and origin of the word Nephilim remain uncertain, and scholars continue to debate its exact significance. Thank you for your support.